we completed the case last time and it usually tells us what the next case is about but it didn't this time oh we had to read a letter i remember the abbey grange affair um usually like lestrand comes in and starts telling us about a case but this time we i think we were receiving a letter about the case um <laughs> yeah let's get in in case this case is eight hours long yep <laughs> Oh god. Oh wow, Blecko. That'll definitely be an interesting read. Our baby, come over here. Excuse me? The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Did, 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 did you hear that? Did somebody just yell, hey baby, get over here? And it was just. <laughs> I didn't expect. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take it. <laughs> She's always there. <laughs> oh wow! I need to know her name. I need to know the her name. On the table, yes, I forgot that you were backseat in this whole shindig. Okay, letter. Oh wait, no, that's letters on the table. Give me my letter then. The letter is on the table, Holmes. You should take a look. Which table? We've got like 500 tables in this flat. I found the letter. Okay. It's very stormy outside, eh? The Brackenstall family coat of arms. Brackenstall? A wax seal with the monogram E B. E Brackenstall. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. Right, Abbey Grange, Marsham, Kent. We're going to Kent. Dear Mister Holmes. I should be very glad of your immediate assistance in what promises to be the most remarkable case. It is something quite in your line. Except for releasing the lady, I will see that everything is kept exactly as I have found it. But I beg you not to lose an instant. I beg you not to lose an instant. As it is difficult to leave Sir Eustace there. What does this mean? Eustace Brackenstall. Yours faithfully, Inspector Lestrade. What do you mean, Re except for releasing the lady? I have kept everything exactly as I have found it, but I beg you not to lose. Like, not to waste any time, I guess. Um. Ah, Kent, near Nottingham, probably, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> near Bridlington, obviously. <laughs> Um, don't lose an instant, i.e. be fast, I see. I did not know that, um, that phrase. Right, I don't need to see that right now. Are we going so straight away? what is it, Holmes? Promising, as always, it appears to be a case of murder. Yeah, so boy. you that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the EB monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified, Lestrade himself had to make haste there, and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live okay. in hope of an interesting morning. Yeah, so first of all, Lestrade, doing all night is. Sleep is important, you know, guys. <laughs> and so, okay, so second of all, 
Did it mean like she was a hostage? Or did it mean she was in jail? Like he said during the crime, so I don't think they mean jail. Uh, investigate the murder at Abbey Grange. Uh, Alright. So we're wearing our... We're wearing our black suit today. I'm happy with this suit. Uh, this suit's fancy. And we're going somewhere fancy. Um, so interesting how certain phrases come into and out of regular use. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Abbey Grange. Okay. Uh, we did already check on Toby. I just wanted to check these letters. This is where I keep my post. So we only received a letter from the first... The lady in the first case. And then after that... Nobody wants to know. I kind of blame them. Um, okay. How can I hold all these instants? <laughs> Got a sleepless strand. Exactly. I will fight you. Crafty's gonna come and make you go to sleep. Okay. That was a quick ride. Ah, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. Here Mr. Holmes. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. Do you remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. It's their work. They stole a silver service which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, <laughs> Theresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. Can you imagine if we'd just been like, Sorry, lady, we can't release you. We need to wait until um, Sherlock Holmes gets here so that we're not tampering with the crime scene. <laughs> you already think she's guilty. She, she does seem really sus. So she's gone from... She was there. She is a hostage. And she's gone from not saying anything to suddenly having an, an account of what happened. Yeah, can't not sleep if you're knocked unconscious. <laughs> yeah, she's got a covey, covey, cover story together. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Sir Warthen Brackenstall. Oh, we're going to get to know the entire family. So that's Warthen. Oh, and of course they don't have names that I'm going to remember. Lord George Brackenstall. Oh, George. I can remember George. George is a good name. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Lord Brigham Beard Brackenstall. Okay. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Lord Ramsay. Ramsay Beard George. Someone. Baron Linden Brackenstall. Linden. The Brackenstall family seems rather austere. Okay, we can always come back if we need to identify family members. Right, so hold on, we've got a door there. We've got a door there. We've got a door there. There. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. The morning room? Oh. Um... A COVID story? Wait, did I say that? Probably. I'm guessing this is the door out. Lady Brackenstall awaits you in the morning room. Oh, not like a morning room. Like, I was like, why does she have a morning room? Did she know this was going to happen? You know? But morning, not morning. A living room to use in the morning. Ah. Um. What about... Excuse that you didn't beat your husband to death with a poker, then afterwards tying yourself up and waiting to be discovered, claiming someone did both these things. It's true, it's true. And 
Well, she must have accomplices because um, something was stolen as well. But she could have done that to like run off with someone. Okay. Well, excuse me for not knowing where the morning room is. Okay. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. Oh. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Only Please a year. accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. Uh, she's being honest. She's being honest. So it looks like there's been an assault. Unless we can, like, get a tissue and see if we can wipe it off. <laughs> um, killed him after a year for the insurance, potentially. Can you describe to me the, the family jewels of yesterday evening? Is it really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. It is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and fell me unconscious to the ground. And then? When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. Very he eloquent. Fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them... The Elder One struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they mm -hmm. had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. So she fainted right after he died. Okay. Um... An assault or someone comes, he fell on a table corner. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you kill them too fast, people suspect you know. I mean, not that I know. <laughs> Shadow is in no danger. <laughs> okay. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes. I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard. But you can see for yourself in the dining room. She's good at um, speaking. Like, she, she tells a good story. Um, surely in this house you can find some decorative swords far more effective than some stick. Yeah, we'll have to look on the walls. <laughs> Fresh bruises. So, that goes with what she said. Pale cheeks. Australian origin. Okay, brooch. Elegant dress. Old bruises. I thought it was going to be dirt. I was like, have you been doing some gardening, lady? Wedding ring. Okay, so yeah, not a happy marriage once again. Can anyone ever be happily married? Is that a thing? <laughs> she could speak, yeah. So... Three dudes turned up, knocked her out when she turned up, killed the husband when he turned up, grabbed a handful of spoons and legged it. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk. And he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. Bruises! The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. 
Maybe she's just jujitsu. Oh no, she's admitted it. Again. So Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Motive? Your ladyship. I mean, she's being very honest, though. Like, that looks like a motive, you know? Like, it would... she did say there's no point in hiding it. No, I had a bruise on my hand from training the other day. I was like, oh my god, I bet this doesn't... <laughs> I bet I look so strange to anyone else. Um, She really is getting number one suspect here. Like, just, oh, maybe the other people did do it, but maybe she hired them too, you know? I'm going to guess they didn't mean to kill... Well, if it was just a robbery, they didn't mean to kill him. Like, they just wanted to burgle. All right, Teresa. Teresa, I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. Your knees are all bruised, but that's from shoving cupboards. I had one on my foot as well. I was like, just last week, I've just been finding bruises in places I don't normally bruise. It's strange. But uh, it's all from training. <laughs> right, Teresa, tell me your account of what happened. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. But I thought nothing of it at the time. Oh, if I'd known... And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. Hmm. That's all adding up so far. Wrinkles. We don't want to look at her button. Oh, something here. Working hand. Handkerchief, vinegar smell. Resuscitation? Karen. Is she being... No, the crime scene hasn't been cleaned up yet, has it? You've got something on your sleeve there, missus. Uh, I've forgotten which direction I was going. Oh. Coffee stain. Coffee. Um, even if she didn't initiate it, you could see taken advantage of. If you don't kill me, I'll tell you where the fancy spoons are. You can also kill my husband while you're at it. Yes, yes. Oh, I can already see that this is gonna have... Uh, like there's already two motives of... Is it a setup or was it a burglary gone wrong? Uh, we're definitely going to choose the wrong one. Coffee stain. We need to take a sample of that. Can we take your apron lady please so that we can go and analyse it and put some acid on it? <laughs> Alright, the times. Family business booming. The Randall gang is back on the street. Less than a fortnight ago, the infamous family burglars, the Randalls as they are known, made their reappearance by way of a brutal but successful intrusion into one of the wealthier homes in Sydenham. The police are already on their trail. However, the details of the crime are being confidential, including that the name of that of the name of a victim. Um, a witness was able to provide a precise description of all three men and this will surely give the police a chance to complete their profile on this family of delinquents. We would like to... We would take the liberty of reminding our esteemed readers about this highly dangerous band and to provide a full description as it is available at the moment. The gang has been in business for some considerable amount of time. Being a father of... Being a family of three... A father and his two sons. The elder, Jack Randall, is a man in his 40s and already great hair, while of average height and build. Right, we need to be taking mental notes here. Being the mastermind behind the burglaries, he retains control over his sons, both of whom are close in age, but very different in appearance. His first son, William... Mark! Thank you!
thank you so much seven months thank you very much almost a year <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> thank you so much how are you doing hope you're good hope you're good um so the first sum william randall is tall and broad-shouldered with a small disproportionate head okay <laughs> the younger brother melvin randall is of somewhat weaker constitution and is skinny as a rake. The gang is wanted not only for their frequent thefts and break-ins, but for the, the exceptionally brutal pirate career they enjoyed before returning to England. Be alert and may your valuables stay safe. <laughs> what an article. They were pirates? Cool, okay. Um, from a sensible point of view, burglary gone wrong is most likely, but from a Sherlock Holmes story point of view, there is no way such a boring and normal crime could happen. That's true. I'm waiting for the twists and turns, though. There's gonna be... Hmm. Like... Oh, is the case gonna be catching these fuckers? Is somebody else gonna get burgled in this time? That would be cool. Probably couldn't throw a harpoon through a guy and pin him on a wall then. <laughs> Maybe the, the the big one with a small head could do that. Uh, Alright, let's uh, read these two. Lady Brackenstall, not quite 25, is from a wealthy Australian family. She's been married for a little more than a year. She has, in all probability, suffered physical violence over the course of the last fortnight. The lady lives a solitary lifestyle, seldom venturing outside. Okay. And Teresa. Teresa is very attached to her mistress and has known her for a considerable time. So she would lie for her. Right? She is the only resident servant at the Abbey Grange, cooking for, serving and nursing Lady Brackenstall. She would not hesitate to protect her in the event of any trouble. Hmm. Okay. Right, so she has a loyal person. The description of the Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. <gasps> Teresa did it! <gasps> Maybe she did. Right, inspecting the body is going to help. Right, so... Were those three men even there, or have they read this article and just fabricated it? Hmm. Maybe it was a plan all along? I want to... Like, I, what I really want to do is inspect this picture of this dog. I don't think we can. It's alright, hold on. We've got, we've got a button. Let's just look everywhere else first. Photograph. Oh, it's the pair. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Well, yeah, Ken. Uh, oh, maybe we can look on the back of the picture. Gibraltar. So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half oh, ago on this ship. <laughs> Wait, is Rock of Gibraltar a ship? Pirate? Bridlington? <laughs> Adelaide. I've been to Adelaide. It's nice there. It was actually my favourite city that I went to in Australia. A trapper's hut. Um... Okay. Let's inspect everything. A trapper's hut. That's probably nothing. Right, let's find overlooking... No, let's underlook details. Ooh. Hmm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. Is this where the spoons were kept? This is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. Okay. Can can you open this 
please, meh. Um, yeah, <laughs> made friends with some pirates and asked them to come kill her husband. <laughs> if I make enough wild theories, I will inevitably be right. Excuse me, lady. Lady Brackenstall, could you open this wall safe? No, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship? Okay, we'll just bring some explosives or something. We'll science it. My mistress is very tired. Can't you allow her to her room? Chill out. We've got investigating to do. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Okay. Let us try to open this safe. Yeah, boy, safe cracking. This safe can be cracked. I only have to pay attention. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. Oh, God. Which direction? Oh, something moved. 17. Oh, God. What happens if I go all the way back around to 17? 15. 15. 15! And then do I go backwards? Get that red eye did her husband beat her oh maybe it's more of a blue eye um a home invasion mac apparently um oh click click i didn't think to confirm it Oh, this is cool after the palace that I just did in Persona 5. <laughs> Ooh. 17. Got it! Got it. Oh, will this number be a secret clue? I hope not. 15, 4, 17, I think. Let's try and remember that. Um... Supposedly the robbers knocked her out, yeah, but she also has old bruising from her abusive husband. Medical report. So Eustace, your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of hepatic decompensation. Hepatic. Is that like liver? The last time we met you, your eyes were bloodshot. And oh yeah, and your skin was tinged with yellow. Uh, there is a particular odor from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage. And there's a lung a lung abscess that we have discussed. The leg cramps you have described to me are caused by an alteration to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes the tremors. Your liver seems excessively hard. At the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving cirrhosis. There are also signs of ascites, fluid in the peritoneal cavity, peritoneal, yeah, cavity, which are evident with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates pancreatic, oh, this dude, malady, which may lead to fatal and Fulminant pancreatitis. Um, your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I'm able to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. Wow, so he is killing himself with alcohol, basically. Sounds like this guy did not need offing. Yeah, he was about to fall apart of his own accord. That's many problems. That is full-on alcoholism. Um, <laughs> see you later, Blacko. Uh, 
pancreatitis. Is that how you say it? <laughs> I don't know how you say it. Inflammation of the pancreas, right? Right, money. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. What? It is common practice to keep one's valuable. Yeah, I mean, we got in it pretty easily. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. Is that it? Oh, nothing. I suppose that, that was quite juicy. I was like, nothing juicy, but yeah, we got that medical report. I think we should ask her about it. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. Is it though? Are you happy? Are you dancing inside? Teresa? Tell me about uh, Eunice, or whatever his name is. Sir Eustace's Eustace. doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me. Was she and Australian I before? To stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was. If ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. Mm. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. Because mm, I was like, how did she even end up married to him? But, um, so it was her first time away from Australia and he charmed her with his money and shit. Beady marriage, yeah. Maybe she... Just wanted like a, a visa for England and and then now she's got it like she can off him. Uh we have thought. Uh, so it didn't pose a challenge for Sherlock, so he's a criminal. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if um, the final case, we are going to be the culprits and we're going to go to jail for all of the false imprisonments that we have done so far. <laughs> I wouldn't be too surprised. Um, he charmed her with his angry disposition and swollen abdomen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe they'd been pen palling for a while. No idea. Um, I didn't realize that um, the Teresa had an Australian accent the first time we talked to her. Uh... Alpha, hello, hello. Maybe she knew he didn't have long to live. Maybe. What I'm getting from this is nobody believes she's as innocent as she seems. <laughs> uh, Lady Brackenstall married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during that time. There is a little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country or acquainted with a sailor. Yeah, we, this is what we said, pirates. Oh god, am I being led down a path? I'm good, thank you all for how are you doing today? We are already coming to probably bad conclusions. Oh wait, I wasn't done with my thought. Um they uh they're a rich family, right? So they're probably gonna be targeted. Uh, Randall's blamed. The robbery was faked and the whole story was invented in order to blame Sir Eustace's death on the Randalls. <laughs> Eli! That's you, right? Thank you so much! Eight months! Nearly a year! Hold on. It is definitely Eli, isn't it? I know you have a Prime account and uh, the other account. And now I'm like, oh my god, am I just saying thanks to the wrong person? 
<laughs> Thank you so much. How you doing? Um, I'm a bit concerned that it's given us these options so easily, you know? Like, we are going straight in on this being a fake here. Almost a Twitch baby, that is true. I am right, excellent. You're working on the year, yeah, nice. Um, I'm glad that I was right there, because you know when you, ha when you say something and then you have this doubt and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> For I said thank you to the wrong person. Uh, but yes, thank you very much. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened. My mistress is very tired. Can okay. Allow her to her room? Right, can I go to the body, please? I want to see the body. Thank you. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober. But an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Mm -hmm. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's <gasps> dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. Okay. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Who gives a shit about a scandal? Caused the scandal, he deserved it. Right? So, okay. She did it. And she is getting away with it. Actually, I'll have you know. <laughs> she isn't going to jail for this. This was self defense. Oh, oh, maybe I can set it up then. So that it is as if those murderers did it and we can send them to jail. Hmm? Then we can get the robbers put away and that guy's dead and everybody is happy. Yes, we are definitely letting whoever killed this guy go scot-free. One million percent. Holy shit, what a scum. Um, there was once a man called Eustace. When he drunk, he was an ass and so useless. <laughs> Oh. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. I'm trying to think of the rest of the poem. Shit, I'm not I'm not quick enough. I'll get back to you on that. Well Can we just maybe hit him with that poker again? Just to make sure, you know? Okay, let's have a look. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. An inseparable pair indeed. Chateau <sighs> Calon Ségur. French wine. Grand Cru. So apparently he was in bed, right? This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. Beeswing? What's beeswing? There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. What does that mean? This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. Okay, so... It is rather strange mm -hmm. that only one of these glasses has dregs of beeswing inside it, while the other two are clear. So... No, they... Um, they heard the commotion apparent. No, he heard the commotion apparently. So then he came out of his bedroom. He'd already gone. She said he retired at half past ten. Are they? I mean, what? You wouldn't wear braces to bed, would you? He doesn't look like he's wearing PJs. Um. I have to say goodbye right away because this is a game you really want to play yourself and you don't want any spoilers. Well, thank you for wishing the excellent time, Eli. And thank you for stopping by and thank you for the sub. And you should definitely play it. This has been really fun so far. It's really cool. Um, These swinger crystals are sometimes forming wine. Is it a bit like bits in orange juice? <laughs> um... 
You, you were thinking like an actual bee's wing. <laughs> Looks a bit like sea salt, but it's tasteless. Right, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, retiring to your room doesn't have to mean sleep. Just means I've had enough company for the day. That's true. That is true. Uh, so in here, there's... It's like two glasses were poured properly to drink. And then one of them was just poured straight from the bottle. Oh, it's the chair. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. Hmm. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was Sailors? handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. Toby? I'm take it with me. Pirate? Okay. Toby's doing things. <gasps> We're recruiting the Torbster. Oh, we've just stood on... We've just stood on plates. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. Okay, immediately there is sus things going on here. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. All of them? Yeah. Uh, can we go in these drawers? Nope. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. Right. Well. Hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, we're not done. Bottle, 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 bottle. This one's empty. A bottle of wine is missing here. Is that the one on the table? The criminals did not thoroughly ransack the house. They only took a little silverware. It doesn't seem like they were here to rob, you know? Otherwise, they might have took more... More things. Hmm. So... Where did this chair come from? These ones don't have arms. This one does. A deer hunt. Um... Oh. There's another... Picture the hunting here. scene. He's got lots of hunting pictures as well. Um, and deer heads, I guess. When we came in the room, it gave us some very close-ups of deer heads. A fur trader's cabin. And there was a hunting cabin and there's a fur trader's cabin. A hunter scene. Why is he so obsessed with hunting? A trapper's hut. A trapper's hut. Who's she? She doesn't... She doesn't matter. The hunting scene. A hunter's cabin. So she did say through the patio... Oh no, the French window. Yeah, she said through the French window she saw the three men, right? Antique hunting weapons. Do they work? The Brackenstall family appear to be preoccupied with hunting. They really do. Hmm. Oh, it's gonna be clock secret? No. Okay. Right, I guess we should inspect the body then. There's a door here, and then there's that door there as well. Oh, and we've so, got the Watson, what tea button. What have you button. learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, oh, Doctor Watson, yeah. Was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received Guessing. the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. He was facing them. That seems important. Let me just back out of that a second because I wanted to do make sure I didn't miss this as well. Mantelpiece. Oh. Uh. It appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. Ah. <gasps> One of the tall men? Is that what she was tied with? I'm gonna assume so. So, right, I do think those people maybe were here. Or maybe not. Ah, uh, no. We don't have enough info yet. Okay, okay. This is fine. Let's examine the body. All we know is that this isn't straightforward. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. Oof. Oof. 
That must be the murder weapon. What about fingerprint? Let's examine the head then. Quite a large stick. A formidable weapon. So that's what he used to confront the attackers. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Okay, so he had been in bed. Okay. Uh, wasn't there a sailor in Lady Brackenstall's past? Sailors tend to be strong. There was, um, she was on a boat from Australia. And when you, actually, that's a long journey, right? On a boat. Um, and there's, um, three burglars like there's a burglar family that have been going around and robbing rich people and they were previously pirates so there's always like an alternate explanation makes it difficult oh so much blood it is covered in blood so eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow that is one possible explanation one possible explanation Okay, we've examined the body. Let's think of our thoughts. Hmm. Like, she was conveniently asleep for a lot of it, right? Uh, oh god, we've got many thoughts. Hold on, stop. Uh, uh oh. What, we can't? The bell rope on the chair was tied with a sailor's knot. Yeah, and the criminals were pirates. Hmm. What's the inspector's tale? Drinking problem. Oh, set the dog on fire. If if the whole motive was because of the dog, that's totally fine by me. Uh Yes, he was definitely violent towards his wife. We have definitely got that. Oops. Uh... Bent poker. Two glasses, criminal. Also, right, two glasses. And it's like they poured the third as an afterthought. Like... Hmm... Maybe they killed him and then staged the rest afterwards. Like maybe she was having an affair and he came in to the house and they were drinking wine together and then Eunice woke up and then they killed him. Uh, and then they were like, oh God, we need to make this look like this thing. Two glasses. What did that make with the... Uh, there were three people drinking wine out of these glasses. One of the three probably preferred wine with these. Oh, preferred it with it. Oh, there was two people and the remaining glass consisted solely of the dregs. From the two other glasses? Why I don't understand how that works. Oh, I'm choosing it. Uh, more clues. The bent poker. Could have been due to the poker blow. But let's see about the fireplace. The deficit use this could have been due to his accidentally striking his head on the fireplace grate. Why couldn't it be both? You know? If it was an accident, there would be no need to hide it all, you know? I think. I don't know. We'll find more evidence. And that does not link up. Okay. I'm so excited to go and see our Toby. Uh, this door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently, the criminals did not venture there. We could still find important things up there. 
You are not doing a good snooping job, detective. Alright, so this is where she saw them come in. Ooh, this is a nice garden. Ooh, imagine having a garden like this. Oh, it's so peaceful out here. Let's just look everywhere. There's a well. Fountain. Alright, and then that's the front door, yeah. And then she's in that room there with that window. That water sounds sloppy. Ooh, a shed. That we cannot go in. Damn it. Okay, maybe we'll just find some random person hiding around here. I'm gonna guess the gate would make us leave. Right, yeah, I don't want to leave. Uh... Right, so we've been over this side. Statue. Bushes! <laughs> what is it with this game and statues and bushes? Oh, a newspaper and some glasses. Nothing to interact with at all. Hmm. This is a beautiful garden. Oh. So the windows are like higher than head height. Alright, we can get in through the front now. This is strange that we've got this whole area and nothing to press. Oh, maybe... Oh, this is... We're gonna bring Toby in. Toby's gonna help us. Toby's gonna sniff the shit out of this back garden. Front garden. Right, let's just quickly talk the to death Austin. was instant. How do you know the death was instant? Can you definitely tell it was from the poker or could it have been from the fire thingy? Right. I've searched outside for footprints without any luck. Right. I'm gonna go and grab Toby. After I've spoken to these. Spoken to these. I'm gonna cheer you up! Oh, oh, will it just give you... Oh no, it might just give us some flashbacks to her own dog. Maybe not. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Mm hmm I just Your don't ladyship. believe her. I think she's read that article. Please leave my Mary alone. She's... Right. Toby! Actually, hold on a second. Oh, I need to perform some analysis too, so we'll go home. Analyze. Analyze. Why do I always want to say analyze? Analyze the roll and grab the doggo. Such a good boy. Right. Let us see how the rope was cut. Oh, that's what we're checking. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly it's cut. It's very smooth. What did they use? Scissors? Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. That looks the fibers pretty smooth. From this cut appear to be different. Oh. Um, that doesn't look smooth enough. <laughs> A knife would be frayed. 
If what? I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original. Fine. Okay. <laughs> the rope was cut with a knife. From the silverware? Maybe? Uh, sailor background. The rope was cut once with a sharp knife and tied quickly into sailor's knot. That could indicate the intruder had a sailor's background. We... I mean, unless they were like a scout. A boy scout. Also. Uh, would a hunter do sailor's knot? Not if the knife is sharp. Yes, so it must have been like a soup, like a super sharp knife. The scissors crush the rope before cutting. Yeah. Come I'm on, taking Toby. Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. Get in my pocket. Oh boy. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. Okay. Someone should take Toby for a walk. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. What do you mean by someone? You're talking about... There's only two of us here, so you're basically saying me. This is where I keep my post. Right. I've pressed take Toby, so I assume he'll be with us. If we go back. 